Hello, Miracle. <laughs> you love making her make noises. I do love making her make noises. Come here. The internet wants to see... And look, immediately she begins to shrink to the very, very back of the tower. <laughs> no! So that she won't be in the camera shot. No! Camera. Don't fucking exploit me. No camera! Fuck you. I don't want to be on the internet. I hate them. Yeah. Come on. Switch forward. There we go. I don't know where mine's got... Grady! Come here. Hi. I'm going to have to bribe mine to come to be on the camera. So while now she's I'm... like, oh, hey, I'd just rather sit in your lap. So while I'm bribing my cat, uh, Iowa caucuses, huh? Yeah. Well, what's that? What have, what have I got for you? the next 10 months of our lives. The good news is, Trump didn't win! Yes! I was really disappointed. We watched his speech hoping he would have a total fucking meltdown, and he didn't. He was really weirdly classy, and I'm really disappointed. I know! We're, we're, we're all it's like, yeah, I'll, I'm, maybe I'll buy a place here or something. Yeah, I was really bummed. I was hoping he would have a total fucking meltdown. And he didn't. But the, the, the bad news... Oh, come here, dude. Where'd you go? Come here. Come here. Man. Come we were actually here. really, really hoping Marco Rubio would pull an upset and hey. come in fucking third. Hey, great. Oh, hi, baby. Hello. You love your human now, don't you? He was so worried you weren't going to like him. Camera. Look in the camera. I don't want to look at the camera. Yeah, no. You don't want to be. Yeah. Yes, that is Dan's guitar behind me. Funny story, Dan has both an electric and acoustic guitar. He doesn't know how to play either one. What? He, he's, he's, he's had them for a while with the goal of learning how to play them when he finished his PhD, which he just did. So maybe you guys can jam live on the show sometime <laughs> if he learns how to play. It's not that hard. Grady, get out of space. Grady's in space. Grady should not be in space. Space cat. Get out of space, Grady. So, yeah. Um, the good news is Trump didn't win. The bad news is Cruz did. Now, there, there's... I was listening to NPR on my drive home from work, and they did say there's only been one Republican in the last 40 years who won Iowa and went on to win the presidency, and that was George W. Bush. So not winning Iowa as a Republican is actually kind of a good omen. We don't want good omens for Trump. We were watching Mad Max Fury Road last night and I was like, oh, my God, this is totally a fucking premonition piece about America under Donald Trump. Like, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Just be driving tanker trucks of breast milk everywhere. You know, Trump is saying a lot of crazy shit, but I really don't think tanker trucks of breast milk are in No, his actually, he threw a hissy when an interviewer wanted to pump breast milk while interviewing him. Or no, it was a lawyer who was deposing him, and she needed to pump, and he flipped the fuck out and left. So probably not. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he has a breast milk platform. Well, with, with that... Breast On milk that nice note, hi. Hi. Apparently, uh, my political rants are starting to get intolerable to the YouTube fans. So we should probably talk about. I don't care. You read the comments. I got comments about getting. I got shit about getting my cat neutered. Yeah. For fuck's sake. You're not supposed to say fixed. That's well, you're not supposed to say go fuck yourself either, and I do that too. Everything's offensive. All right. Well, now that we've we've attended everything but these kitties, you're offensive to me. You won't let me sleep. You exploit me on the internet. I wonder if she even knows the noises she makes at this point. I don't think so, because she's deaf. Still ass deaf. So she doesn't even know she's doing that. Which is why when she meows, there's no volume control. 
Meow. There was no meow. There was only meow. Well, anyway, it's time for the nonsense. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here from the segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And, um, it's the wrong thing. Here we go. Um, so, it's always weird on this show when something incredibly just baffling happens, and then it happens again. I was going to say, that's weird. That's what we do. It's not that it happens. It's when it happens repeatedly. Our first story this week is one I was absolutely sure we would not have a repeat of. Do you remember back when I, it was a gas station, a Circle K, got a prank call that told them that they needed to start smashing the windows... Yes. And throwing all the stuff out the out and making a giant mess and smashing the merchandise, and the employees did it. Yeah. And I thought to myself, self, what a wonderful world. This could never happen again. This was a one-time thing. Nope. Nope. Burger King employees break windows after prank call about gas leak. Prank call. How, how would that help you in a gas leak? Prank call to the Morro Bay Burger King late Saturday night about a fake gas leak led to major damage for the business. Employees of the Burger King on 781 uh, Quintana Road received a call from someone who indicated they were a representative of the fire department advising of an emergency. Caller said the business's windows need to be broken for ventilation, and the store's employees allegedly complied. They're never going to tell you that. You know what they're going to tell you if there's a gas leak? Get, Get the, the fuck, fuck out! Building. They're not going to tell you, hang out in that building and break the windows. They're going to tell you, get the fuck out of that building. Yeah, it's not going to be one of those, no, no, it'll be fine having a gas leak. It's cool. Just break the windows and you'll be able to breathe. Because the fire department, yes, they are interested in saving that structure. They're much more interested in you not dying. Could, could we just prop the door open? So something? priority one is going to be getting all the humans out of that building. Could, could, could we prop the door open? No, no, you have to break the windows. Propping the door open isn't enough. The windows must be... We've got like... They're not paid enough to use doors. common sense, no. That doesn't track because I work retail. Mm -hmm. I've worked retail for a long ass time. I've worked at Starbucks. I've worked in malls. You don't make a lot of money. That's true. No. I make enough money. It's not even about the money. I have enough brain cells to rub together to know that I probably shouldn't smash out the fucking windows at my job. Because you know what I don't get paid enough to do? To cover that. And here's another thing. If there is a gas leak and it's time to get the fuck out, they might call, but you know what else is going to happen? They're going to show up. Yeah. They're going to be the big red truck with the loud lights and the sirens and woo, and they're going to come in and say, get the fuck out. Pork like, chop sandwiches. Tell me you have get to break the all the windows because there's a gas leak. I'm going to be like, no, I'm just leaving. Yes. If this, if this motherfucker is going to blow, if... To quote the immortal Kesha, this place about to blow. Oh, 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 oh. I'm leaving. Yeah, they, they, they're not going to call you on the phone and tell this is not you know a... what else I don't get paid enough to do. Worry about the structural integrity of my job over my own life. And this it's not a do it. A gas leak is not a do it yourself. That really is not a do it yourself issue. Oh, you'll get the fuck out. <sighs> So, oh, moving right along, um, have you seen the uh, the new updated Barbie dolls? I have. They, they Bar uh, Mattel is releasing a whole bunch of different Barbies in a whole bunch of different body types and skin tones, 
And as a girl with an ass the size of Cleveland, I'm pretty excited about it. My only little tiny complaint is the curvy Barbie has really skinny arms. And I'm here to tell you, if you got an ass like that, you also well, have jiggly arms. Not, not Cleveland. Rhode Island, maybe. Not Cleveland. Rhode Island's bigger than Cleveland. It is? Cleveland's a city. Rhode Island is a state. <laughs> Rhode Island's a state? Really? Come on. on. Come on. We just gave them we just gave them if this. You, if you got the big old jiggly butt, you got some big old jiggly arms too. And they still gave her skinny arms. Ah, yeah, that's a little unrealistic. But whatever. I respect the effort. I appreciate Bro. what they're doing. And, uh, hold, hold on. Rhode Island only got Rhode Island got the pity star on the flag. Look, my point was I have a big ass. <laughs> that's it. Well, while this was considered a, a step forward in representation for all different body types of females, and it was a good thing. <sighs> the MRAs had to join the party. Of course they did. Oh, the poor oppressed white men. Where's dad bod Ken? Men react to Barbie's new look with body demands of their own. I, I don't know why the MRAs are upset, actually, because Ken already has no dick, just like them. <laughs> Perfect representation. Right. Like, they've already made dickless Ken. You're done. You've been represented. While Mattel and similar companies have been taking steps to combat criticism over gender toys, Barbie still marked almost exclusively made it to girls, may see odd to some, then, that masses of grown men are demanding a more realistic-looking male companion for Barbie on Twitter right now. Uh, as... <sighs> Mata... A lot of grown men that play with Barbie dolls. Yeah, you know what? Well, you know what? Bronies. So maybe. You weren't the target market for Barbie. You were never the target market. They weren't the target market for My Little Pony either. Well, but yes. they done took that shit over. Yeah, I mean, well, I, people were talking about it on Twitter earlier today. Is, let's be honest about Ken. Ken was not the focus of the Barbie line. Ken is an accessory. Nobody gives... Two chicken fried fucks about Ken. Nobody. Nobody. I had, okay, I had about 67 Barbie dolls when I was a kid. So many Barbie dolls. Every Christmas I got one new Barbie doll. And I just, I fucking loved Barbie. I really did. I kind of still love Barbie, but I don't have any more because that'd be weird because I'm going to be 39 on Sunday. I, I made my own Barbie clothes. Like, I was fucking into Barbie. I had one Ken doll. I had one Ken doll. He had one arm and no clothes. <laughs> Who gives a fuck about Ken? Nobody. <laughs> what was that one arm? And, what was he, failed dog trainer Ken? I guess. I lost his arm and I didn't give a fuck and he had no clothes. And <laughs> So you just, you had a naked one-armed Ken. Yep. Wandering around the dream house. Barbie's like, Ken, get a job. Or at least let's, some pants. Let's be honest. If Barbie wants to get it, Barbie's getting it from G.I. Joe. <sighs> Not Ken. With his plastic ass hair. I, what, what this really comes down to is I'm sad when things are not about me. Exactly. It's... Ken, how much other fucking shit do you have? Dudes, you, you've got, let's see, just about every other fucking toy franchise in the universe. But this is how the MRA brain works. If everything isn't about us, then we're being oppressed. So every time something isn't about them, we have to freak out. And it's like, no, welcome to being everybody else all the time. You fucking whiny piss babies. This is this. I mean, is this really the hill you want to die on? This is this is the one. Because there's not beer gut Ken. You, you want to tell your well, grandkids? I have a problem with the whole dad bod thing. Oh, really? I have a problem tell. with the fact that dad bod is now sexy. Because if a woman is a size four, holy shit, that fat bitch needs to stay home. But we're going to try and make a beer gut sexy. Fuck you. Get on the goddamn exercise bike. 
I'm not saying a man can't be sexy with a gut. I'm saying I don't want to make it a thing because fuck you and your double standards. You want to start calling Amy Schumer sexy, Queen Latifah sexy, which they are. Fine, we can do dad bod. Otherwise, you can go to hell. Okay, I'll go to hell. I didn't say you personally. <laughs> I'm not saying if you have a beer, uh, you should go to hell. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the dad bod thing is stupid because it's double standard. Because women are held to a much different standard. Oh. Chief is not sexy now. You're wrong. She is. Oh, speaking of different standards, this is going to be a weird one. Okay, so... I wouldn't say you should go to hell if you have a gut, because I haven't asked the size of Cleveland. <laughs> we we have we've had a lot of smuggling stories on the show, mm -hmm. lots and lots of smuggling stories. But normally those involve like something rare and and you know, super valuable, like drugs or even rare animals or other stuff like that. Or hummingbirds. Yeah. Or turtles. This one, it's it's like or iPhones, which yeah, but this one is all about where you are, I guess, in the world and what what constitutes valuable. And my God, this guy, you gotta admire his chutzpah, at least. Saudi smuggler is caught with fourteen bottles of spirits clinking in his pants. Oh. Custom officials said they became suspicious after they noticed the man walking oddly. <laughs> oh my god, he's a, he's a Johnny Walker. <laughs> they noticed him walking oddly. You don't fucking say. Well, I mean, at least he was wearing robes and not trying to look normal in a pair of jeans with that, but you're going to there's no part of the human anatomy that clinks. <laughs> it don't fuck. <laughs> and if it does, you should have it looked at. Uh, custom official said the man was on his way back from Bahrain. Alcohol is legal in oh, Saudi Arabia. Spirits as in ghosts. Oh, my sweet summer child. No, he did not have he did not have ghosts in his pants. We forget that half our audience are children. Yeah. Alcohol is legal in Saudi Arabia, and those spouts found smuggling or supplying it are subject to harsh penalties, including flogging. Jesus. That sucks. I, it's, it's, was this really worth it? <laughs> Number one. I don't know. That's a lot of booze. I'm counting like six bottles. Of, I mean, it's Johnny Walker red, though. It's not like it's blue label. I, it, it, it just, I don't know what. It looks like maybe the rest is maybe vodka or something that can't be comfy that cannot be he's just got like booze taped to his ass why are we giving the internet the butt baby okay thank you oh. we are kind of giving them the butt though okay good, good. and we just snorted <laughs> <laughs> i my god really that what can't if, be comfy Wait, they're they're strapped to his butt. Yes. Was he trying to get on a plane? No, I think he was just trying to cross the border. Oh. Although if he if he had been on a plane, how how did he do that? Yeah, you can't sit with giant bottles of booze strapped to your butt. You have to realize that there's a point where you're standing. If, on in... if only one of those had cracked. Oh. Not only would he have the glass shard, but then the alcohol on top I mean, of it. The good news is that wound would be clean. The bad news is, oh God! The good news is, you now only have one ball, and the one that's missing is soaked in fucking scotch. At what point in your life are you standing up, buck fucking naked, with a guy with packing tape in one hand and bottles of booze in the other, getting them strapped to your ass? 
thinking also I think you want packing tape, by the way, while we're at it, because that's going to have to come off somehow. Yeah. How do you look at this and go, I've made the proper life choices? Packing tape on the inner thigh? Yeah, no. Men don't shave their legs, so yeah, there's no. hair coming out with it. Uh, this was this really worth getting flogged over? This was a bad so. choice. This was this was a bad choice. You have made bad choices. Speaking of bad choices, Uber, 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 Uber. God, I hate every time Uber is in the news. It always makes me fucking cringe. You know, they are kind of the douchiest company. That said, I've used Uber a bunch of times, and it really is convenient. Tara, like. Tara, you have a you're fucking app me. on your phone and you tell them where to be and in like three minutes, literally like three minutes, they're there. You have already paid. You do not have to tip. You don't you don't need cash. Like it yeah, is and, really convenient. And they're using all the money you give them to destroy regulation. Yeah, well, it's especially a thing in New York because cabs are very heavily regulated in New York. Uber is not. It's just any asshole with a black car can be uber well you know one of the things about taxi cabs is they have that wonderful plexiglass screen between yes. driver and passenger so if you have a belligerent passenger who is drunk and tries to you know assault the driver there's a little bit of a barrier well yeah you've had assaults both ways with uber you've had yeah. customers get assaulted You've had women get raped by their Uber driver, and you've had Uber drivers getting assaulted. Like, it's... Well, Uber has come up with... A, they're testing a solution to keep drunk passengers from assaulting their drivers. Can you guess what it is? I don't want to. Bop it! What? Bop it! What? What? The on-demand ride app has been conducting an experiment in the North Carolina city of Charlotte, in which drivers leave a bop it, a noisy children's sound game, in the back seat during rides. The goal is that riders who overindulge that evening will become so engrossed that they forget to pester the driver. What? This is from Uber's chief security officer. Joe Sullivan, quote, an intoxicated rider who is engaged in something is interesting is less likely to be irritable and aim aggression at the driver. Except if that doesn't work, you've given them a bludgeon. <laughs> <laughs> like, what if they can't keep up with Bop It because they're fucked Get up? Drunk. <laughs> and now they're angry and they have a fucking melee weapon. Jesus Christ! I didn't even know they still made Bop It. Why Bop It? I don't know! Does someone just have a fucking storage container full of them and needed a use for them? This is from Uber's chief security officer. <laughs> I really want to have been in this meeting. No, 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 guys. I got it. I got it. Bop It. What? I didn't even know they still made these. So we have two options. We can one, potentially come up with a way to reinforce a barrier in people's cars so that they can't be assaulted by drug people or we can buy children's toys. That's something that would kind of kill their business model though because the whole point of Uber is you use your own car. So if you're forcing people to make expensive modifications to their cars, you're gonna lose drivers. It's it's a freelance type business. I understand this, all the problems that come is, with that, but yeah, and this is a big part of the, of the problem with Uber when yeah. they encounter a difficulty, an obvious difficulty that the regulations and livery services exist for reasons. When they encounter some of these difficulties, instead of thinking of sensible ways to contend with them, bop it. This bop is the it. mentality of the company. Not even a. Current game. No, no, think it was Bop It. We pulled out a toy from 1990 the Never. It wasn't even popular people. when it was popular. Nobody I knew had a Bop It 
Nobody. <sighs> Did anybody you know have a bop it? No. No. I've never even it seen was a stupid ass toy. <laughs> I've never even seen a bop it in person. It's like. It's like if Rube Goldberg had designed Simon. For the youngins in the audience that don't know what a bop it is. If they like, don't know what a bop it is, you really think they're going to know what a Simon is? Like if it's, it's like a Simon was 3D and built out of spare parts. <laughs> by uh. a psychopath. We have another addition in our uh, our continuing series of mishaps with public relations oh dear. and advertising. Um, take that back, Tara. Take back which part? You have to narrow that shit down. So, you remember how we keep saying, if you're going to come up with a slogan, the first thing you should do is run it by a 13-year-old. And see if they giggle. Yeah. The Canada Health Advisory uh, Council, um, it's the Yukon Health and Social Services, thought people needed uh, more vitamin D in their in their diet. So they... Uh, Which we do, because you get that from the sun, and we are increasingly uh, wearing sunblock and limiting our sun exposure. Yeah. So that is true. So they, uh, they, they started an ad campaign to try and get the word out about this. We all need the D, advises health agency. Oh my god, that's great. And the ad is all women. <laughs> it's only women in that ad, so someone knew. Like, the designer got that copy and was like, okay. In a series of posters that were clearly not proofread by anybody under the age of 30, Yukon Health and Social Services came up with lines such as, we all need the D, even me. How do you do the D? Need a little help with your daily D, and I'm in my 30s. Who knew I needed to do the D? Which... <laughs> and that ad is a very <laughs> man with a dog. <laughs> so, that has upsetting. <laughs> The dog, by the way, does not look happy. <laughs> the man looks very confused and the dog looks very unhappy. So in case you need it explained, this common slang term, the D means the dick and not the essential vitamin needed for bone growth. You... Fun bit of trivia about our household. While Dan's been working on his PhD, He's he's had to work on a dissertation, which he for the past few years has called the D. <laughs> so he'd say, like, yeah, I've got to work on the D tonight. And oh. we would joke at the double entendre. You oh, know, I'm because we're puerile. I'm sure but that was also understood what we were saying. I'm sure that was entertaining as hell at Christmas. So what have you been up to, Dan? Well, I've been working on my D. A yeah, lot. I don't think my family would get that. Spending a lot of time with my D. My family's really straight laced. <laughs> UConn Health and Social Services quickly removed. What's, all... what's most upsetting is someone pointed out that might be a male baby in that picture, which makes that one even worse because yeah. it's three women and a baby, and the headline is "We all need the D, even me." <laughs> <laughs> the baby doesn't need the D. The baby doesn't need the D. Yukon Health and Social Services quickly removed all traces of the campaign from its website after BuzzFeed Canada and a number of Twitter pointed out the unintentionally hilarious poster. I'm sorry, the guy with the dog. The guy with the dog. <laughs> and the woman who looks very, very scared of a plate of fish and some milk. Like, oh, need a little help with your daily D? Yeah. <laughs> So, you, every ad campaign, run it by a 13-year-old first. And if they giggle, you're done. You're done. If you run Start it... Start over. Yep. And it's they don't... Black sheep of her family. 
There's there are two different kinds of giggles. There's the hey, that's funny giggle, and there's the oh god, you said something if really they, nasty. If they do the Beavis and Butthead giggle, <laughs> you start <laughs> over. Do not pass go. Do not rework said campaign. Start over. D. <laughs> D. Oh. <laughs> Who knew I needed the D? <laughs> you just know some fucking Canadian douchebag is gonna like start making take your vitamins jokes at women. <laughs> I am the great Conhodio. I need the D. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Finally, this will help with your daily D. <laughs> Finally, this week we've we've had quite a number of of events on airplanes where it's been passengers being total shits, yeah. either getting super drunk, being belligerent to the crew, attacking the crew, attacking each other, just making airline travel a nightmare. So I guess this story's maybe a little bit refresh refreshing in that uh, it it wasn't this time it wasn't the passengers. Cabin crew brawl forces Delta pa Delta passenger plane to make an emergency landing. Wow. Punch up between two stewardesses happened 40 minutes into a Delta flight between LA and Minneapolis. Passenger plane was forced to make an emergency landing between, between, because two stewardesses got into a mid-air fist fight. The brawl, which the company puts down to, quote, work issues, Happened on the Delta plane about 40 minutes into its journey. A third female flight attendant who tried to break up the, ball, the brawl was purportedly hit in the face. <clears throat> After being made aware of the fight at 37,000 feet, the captain is said to have made an emergency landing. He, I swear... The captain actually had... <clears throat> I swear to God, I will turn this plane around. <laughs> turn this plane around. They've gone wild. The stewardesses have gone wild. How does this happen? How do you do? How do you? Did one chick really, really want to do the safety talk and not get to? Janice, it was my turn to play with the little the air thingy. I do the mask, Janice. I do the mask on this plane. You don't do the mask. I've been here longer. Seniority, Janice. Like, I'm sure it's a difficult job. I'm sure it is. I don't mean to make light, but. What is there to get in a fist fight about at 37,000 feet? Imagine you're the crew. These are the people, should the plane crash, that you were depending on to yeah. tell you how to survive yeah. this. And they're there punching the fuck out of each other. And they're acting like the fucking real housewives <laughs> of the friendly skies. What the fuck is going on? I would not. It, it, Sounds like they needed a little help with the D. No, Tara. Stop it with the D. We've had enough D for one night. Thank you. Well, we definitely have not. No. You've never had enough D. <laughs> Even hear Dan laughing in the background. Can That's you true. ever really have enough D? Maybe <laughs> nay. Puerile creatures. What is it? There's nothing. There is nothing going on in that plane that is so important. That if you really need to deck somebody, get your ass off the plane first. Well, not at 35,000 feet. Well, wait till it lands. Wait maybe till it just, lands. Maybe just sit at other ends of the plane. Maybe just separate yourselves for a while. You have mini bottles. You can make this a little better. Yeah, you can break them and have a shank. As, actually, no, you can't. They're plastic now. Do you have those? Oh. The mini bottles aren't even glass anymore. Is that true? Uh, Airplane bottles aren't glass anymore? Little mini bottles of booze? I only drink uh, ginger ale on planes. He Always glass bottle. Oh. I've I've whiskey still in glass. He drinks on planes. I only ever drink ginger ale on planes, so I wouldn't know. I I was given a Bacardi because I was inconvenienced on a plane, so they just handed us 
free bottles. It was plastic. I was like, oh. what happened? But yeah. My my ginger ale comes in a can. So I guess I guess the first thing we've learned this week is there is no difficulty you're having that needs to be resolved by recreating Thunderdome in a tight little metal tube. With, with airborne fisticuffs. Yeah. No. No. It's it's That's not excellent in flight entertainment. I don't know, people be placing bets and shit. I, it's the best way to deal with that. We've learned always run your advertising campaigns past someone below the age of 18. That really should be like a young intern program where just that's your job. Yeah, you just you stay there and they go out and they say stuff to you. And if you giggle, they know not to use it. Yeah. Of like course. It needs to be a thing because grownups do not get shit. Of course, like there's probably three or four things we've said on the show that we don't even understand because we're fucking old. We're old now. Yeah, we are. So there's probably shit. Yeah, I know my last initial, my last name starts with a D, guys. Thank you. Does? Everyone's like, wait, it's Tara D. Are you having trouble with the D? Because I can help you. So we've probably said a few things that the, the whippersnappers in the chat are like, <laughs> that we don't even know about because we're old. We've learned that cost cutting, you know, when you're trying to cut the cost and pass the savings on to nobody, go fuck yourselves. I can't tell if Tara was just propositioning me or threatening me. Good. We've learned that it's nothing is worth Strapping scotch to your ass with packing tape. <laughs> there are better life. You, there are better life cho choices you could be making, right, man. You could be drinking that scotch. For yeah, a while. yeah. It's like I could strap this to my ass, or I could fucking drink it. Even if it is red label, it's still better than strapping it to your ass. Yeah. The we, sickest I ever got was when I weighed 105 pounds and drank, like, half a bottle of Johnny Walker Red by myself on New Year's Eve. That was, that was a bad idea. We have learned everything does not need to be about you. Just no. let some shit go, for fuck's sake. Let some shit go. And finally, we've learned if some random people call you up on the phone... And tell you to start busting windows. A little skepticism can go a long way there. Oh my. 